Mr. Knut Horbeck Nielsen, who will now uh, give you a presentation on the work that has been under undertaken over the last 12 months. Thank you. Today, as you know, the evening program is more intense than the day program, so uh, come Thursday, if you start feeling uh, the uh, hardship of the week. Although I must say I enjoy it a lot. Um, as usual, um, I would like to start with a song, not singing, <laughs> but we should think about uh, a regular song. I'm not sure how well uh, it uh, was suitable, the, the last song that I chose, but um, I thought about this time maybe to take something from uh, Simple Minds, uh, mid 80s. Uh, maybe some of you know uh, Don't You, in brackets, Forget About Me. So I thought that was pri uh, quite appropriate for sort of a, a farewell uh, press briefing as the IX chairman. So, with those uh, words, at least there we have something that we can talk about after. So what I plan to share with you now, um, I will not spend too much time presenting, um, but what I would like to share with you now is where we sort of began almost a year ago, uh, what are the, say, deliverables or the key milestones that we have achieved during this year. Uh, I will emphasize a bit the uh, supporting role that the IX uh, has towards the IMO. Sorry about that. I need to do something or... And then maybe more importantly uh, towards the end I would like to say try and look a little bit ahead uh, and maybe this can be seen as my uh, kind advice to the next chairman Mr. Lee OKR. Um, I think we've said for quite a long time that there are really, um, you know, a couple of mega trends that are affecting shipping. Um, these are not breaking news, so you're all uh, well aware of these. Uh, digital transformation we've talked about, uh, decarbonization is certainly high on the agenda after the uh, decision in the IMO. And uh, coming from an IX perspective, it's natural that we say look at these megatrends, how they impact the, uh, the entire marine industry at the same time how can IX uh, make sure that we ensure uh, safety at sea. So uh, it is uh, quite obvious to me that the world is uh, spinning faster, the changes are coming more rapidly uh, and uh, the complexity of the marine industry is increasing and uh, the natural question to ask is uh, how can IX as an industry organization for the 12 members, the 12 classification societies thrive in this more complex, more digital environment. Uh, I will give you uh, one example just to kick it off. Um, the issuance of electronic certificates I think is a, a very key, very low hanging uh, example of how the uh, classification societies are addressing the digital transformation and uh, if some of you remember that this really uh, was initiated in October last year and uh, some societies have now issued more than 100,000 electronic certif certificates and will be say fully converted to electronic certificates for their entire fleets by the end of this year. So that is, uh, say, a, a very practical example on how uh, the classification societies are adapting. I will come back to some of the other topics uh, uh, as we go along, but let's, uh, let's take it step by step. So if I look at what were the focus areas that we set out to work with uh, at the start of the uh, chairmanship period, it was threefold. First, it was really to modernize classification and that is really to anticipate the developments that we just talked about 
and how uh, the classification societies can uh, adapt and make use and let the entire marine industry uh, make use of innovations and new technologies while at the same time focusing on safety and quality. The second uh, focus area was to really re-emphasize the importance of IAX as a leading technical association in the maritime industry and being a key advisor to the IMO and how can we make sure that that is further strengthened and uh, as a part of that we reviewed the membership criteria and we also looked into the quality and the performance measurements of the IX members. Uh, third uh, and the last focus area is really about increasing uh, transparency of IX and also to ensure continuity in the leadership of IX. Uh, if I start on the last uh, bit, we introduced the five-year strategic outlook which gives IAX and its members a uh, more uh, long-term direction and this is naturally a very important uh, um, strategy to have in place uh, but also to boost transparency of the work uh, and the performance and the deliverables uh, from IAX. And uh, just on that note, this is in fact the third press briefing that I give as an IX chairman. The first one was in London in September. The second one was a few months ago in, in London again, and now finally here uh, at uh, Posidonia. So I think that is just taking the medicine that we prescribed and being quite transparent about the progresses that we have made and what we intend to do. So, um, I think I more or less covered this aspect, but modernizing classification is really about allowing innovations uh, and become more advanced, transparent and efficient in serving the maritime industry. And if I were to point to a couple of examples, um, the topic of more autonomy is quite high on the agenda. Uh, I know that members of the press has been quite uh, excited about the topic of unmanned vessels, but I will reiterate again that it's more about higher degrees of autonomy rather than unmanned vessels. And in this context, um, IAX have worked on what are the regulatory barriers preventing further degrees of autonomy to take place on board and also uh, looking into a common language terminology for high degrees of autonomy. Uh, another practical example is also of how we can utilize modern survey techniques. So we've uh, seen over the past couple of years the introduction of drones into the inspection of vessels and indeed offshore uh, platforms. Now this is only one uh, means of bringing the interesting component or part of the structure to the surveyor rather than the surveyor having to visit those items in which he has an interest to inspect, maybe at high altitudes, maybe at a more dangerous uh, working uh, platform, etc. And drones is one way of doing this, but it's also about uh, live streaming of videos and other means of bringing the component to the surveyor. And uh, it's interesting to see that the development in this area is really going quite fast. And when you think about the drones that we started off with, off with a couple of years ago, it was really uh, taking what is commercially available, modifying them to make them fit for the marine environment. And if you look at some of the drones available today, they are the size of, of this remote control or even smaller. And you can imagine uh, 
the areas in which you can inspect, whether they are inside of, of pipes or behind inaccessible areas. And this provides quite a good um, a tool uh, for ensuring safety at sea. I know that many of you have been here uh, during the previous session uh, listening to uh, how to build cyber uh, resilience. So uh, there is no point for me uh, to go into details after all experts have already given you a lot of insights. Uh, I would just like to highlight that IX is working on basically uh, two different things. Um, there is a risk model that we are looking at how to assess cyber safety, looking at the uh, exposed surfaces of a vessel for cyber uh, attack and helping the marine community to assess and deal with those risks. So that is one uh, part. The other part is really to issue recommended practices on uh, how you can uh, address this during the new building stage of uh, new vessel construction. And at this point in time, we have issued nine of these recommended practices. Uh, we will, by the end of, of this year, complete the series. It will be 12 altogether. And our ambition is that we will present and, and, and introduce this to the IMO um, in the spring. So, um, on the topic of enhancing quality and transparency, um, we have worked uh, over the past year um, inside of YX on uh, benchmarking or, or what we call the, the quality performance indicators to be more uh, transparent, to be more, um, uh, say, to be more uh, prescriptive on, on the quality performance. I think this is really a, a good way of helping the IX members to increase its uh, quality performance. Uh, I mentioned briefly the membership criteria. The most significant change is the um, goal-based standards compliance requirement. Uh, there are quite a number of other uh, modifications to the uh, criteria as well, and I'm sure that uh, Rob can uh, highlight some of those if you are interested. And, um, and these are all, say, uh, measures that we have put in place to increase the uh, quality level and anyone who is meeting the uh, membership uh, criteria is, of course, uh, welcome as a member of, of the IX uh, community. I mentioned that supporting the IMO is really at the core of what IX can do. Uh, you know the IMO with its uh, 174 member states, uh, they really need a competent technical advisor, uh, one they find uh, in IX. And um, when legislation is coming through in the IMO, uh, sometimes the text is not totally clear. Uh, sometimes the uh, level of detail is not totally uh, uh, exhausted and in this circumstance there are need for what is called unified interpretations and that's where IAX really take a key role in interpreting these and putting those forward to the IMO. And as you can see here we have done that for about 130 uh, unified requirements. So it's quite a, it, it may seem as a trivial thing, but I can assure you if the regulations, if the legislation is not clear, it causes a lot of, of confusion. So this is uh, quite a, a detailed, uh, but all the same, a very important and critical uh, piece of work. So it's always interesting to look ahead. Um, I'm not going to look ahead towards 2050. I will be much more restricted than that. 
Um, but uh, if, if I could give um, a piece of advice to my uh, next chairman in Ajax, it would really be that we put a lot of effort and emphasis on executing the newly developed five-year strategy. It's really, I mentioned earlier, that the complexity on regulation is really uh, growing every year and to, for IAX to be able to give good advice and opinions on relevant industry topics is quite key and in order to do this IAX needs to be agile, uh, needs to take an industry position based on its scientific and technical knowledge. And then I can only encourage that the next chairman of IAX is pursuing the path that we set out on transparency and that we use the annual report as our main vehicle to share uh, the quality performance, the vessel sizes, the number of surveyors and all other information that is relevant for the maritime industry in the annual report. We have not issued the annual report uh, two years and I would suggest that that is really a key source for IX to be uh, more transparent going forward in line with what is normally expected in a modern society. And this is not least important because of what I said earlier is that class in this world is more relevant than ever and the role of class needs to be taken good care of and um, the role of class is really about building trust between the different parties in the maritime industry. And I think in these times where we see tectonic shifts in both markets, regulations and technology, it is quite important that IX is a beacon of light setting the course with modern requirements, transparent processes and the highest quality of service. And one very important aspect is that the industry is changing, transforming if you will. Our ways of working is changing, I, I've given a few examples already. Uh, but the purpose of classification still remains and that is to protect life, property and the environment and ladies and gentlemen that is as important going forward into the digital world as it was for the past 250 years in the analog world. So with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm at the end of my sort of brief and um, I would just like to share with you uh, a couple of recognition and that is first and foremost uh, our Secretary General and his permanent staff in London. I think they have done a very good job in supporting the chairmanship during this year. They have a very important job to do to make sure that we are putting uh, the things that we say, the ambitions that we have into motion and I think that Rob uh, and his team has done a great job in delivering on that. And um, the second uh, appreciation that I would like to make is really to the DMVGL team, uh, some of which are here today that have supported me during uh, my term as Chairman of IX. And not least you, I mean the media, uh, you are a very important part of the maritime community and you share uh, on a wider scale the news, the challenges and also the opportunities that exist and for that I'm very grateful. So thank you very much for the attention and I think we will open the floor for any question that you might have. Thank you very much.